Hi friends, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. And today on my program is Flashpoint leader, Gene Bailey. You don't wanna miss it, it will inspire you. Come right back. Welcome back, Jean, to the program, thank and you. we're such such a gift to have you here today. Oh, because, thank you. Good to be here. Um, I love what you're doing for the kingdom of God, and so tell me about Flashpoint for the audience. You're on NRB TV, so tell the audience what you're doing on Flashpoint currently. Uh, well, and you know, Flashpoint, of course, is doing uh, programs three nights a week. We're currently uh, live three nights a week from Texas, 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern Time. And we're, we're covering what's going on in the nation, what's happening, the real news. I, we, we used to say commentary uh, on the, the prophetic and what's happening in, in, in the news from a spirit of faith. It's not just that um, because it, it's kind of a commentary on America on, on entirety. So you, you'll see a lot of people on it. You'll see you'll have a, a Southern Baptist on there with a, you know, maybe a word of faith guy, maybe a you know, uh, a Pentecostal, you know, it's a real mishmash of America. And so we're not, you can't pick, you can't pigeonhole or narrow down what Flashpoint really is. And that's the part I love because we're, you, one minute we'll be talking about what's going on in Congress. And the next we'll be praying about what God's doing with child trafficking. So uh, that's really what it is. And it's, it's a show that God's just smiled on and uh, we're, walking out. Then of course the other part of Flashpoint is our events across the country where we're doing Flashpoint live events. Uh, it's not just a place where we inspire, it is part of that, but the other side of that is to get people educated and understand. And there's something about when people of like faith get together, and especially people of faith when they get together, not only does iron sharpen iron, but you, you, know, you don't feel alone anymore. There's a lot of times we all felt kind of alone since 2020 of what's going on in our world. So that's where we are. Now, one thing I love about Flashpoint is you, you cover a lot of critical issues. Yes. And we know the enemy has tried to come in and take over the nation. That's true. But as Christians, we're saying you're not gonna take over. And so I love how you're, you're bringing the light. Right. right. And you're not letting that divisive spirit the, the enemy would love to divide us all. Like you just said, you have a, a whole, all the Christians. Yeah, and it's true. And they, you know, not everybody, I know you find this hard to believe, Dr. Merlin, but they, not everybody likes me. You know, our biggest battle isn't from without, it's from within. Uh, because there's a lot, it's uh, when you start knocking on old religious uh, traditions, uh, that's very unnerving to a lot of people. And, and you know, I, I wanna be sensitive, not really, but I'm trying to be sensitive to, to people to understand. But listen, these are the times we live in. This is not a time we don't have the luxury to kind of wait until you get it. We don't. Uh, this year is the year that we've got to make sure that uh, we are pressing for America, what we were founded upon and why we're here. And if we don't do this this year, next year this time it'll look very different because they I want agree. to destroy America. Yes, they, they really do. do. And you know, like never before, you know, you look back and you think when Reagan was president, Right. It was about the economy. Yeah. It's not that way anymore. It's about light and darkness. It is. Yeah, and it's not even Republican versus Democrat. It's not. Uh, you used to think, well, one was better. No, no, there, there's bad on both sides. Uh, w one platform, however, does line up more with biblical values, and that's the pla if you're going to vote uh, on a platform, you've got to vote that way. So I, I just really believe that this is a time for Americans to, number one, we have to wake up. We have to get up. Uh, faith, we have to operate in faith, and that doesn't mean just praying. Now, I'm not saying don't pray, but faith isn't uh, leaning on your shovel waiting for God to dig the hole. Well, there's got to be some action to it. So we've got to be 
And that, believe it or not, that's been one of the biggest issues. People don't want to do anything. They want to just talk about it or, well, let's just, we'll have a prayer meeting and then hopefully things will change. It's not going to work that way. We've got to be involved. We've got to get outside the walls of the church. We've got to get outside the walls of our school. Uh, speaking of school, we've got to go to our schools, our public schools, get involved, change our schools, change our school boards. All that takes effort and we're going to have to pick up those pieces. We're behind. We dropped the ball for many years and now it's time to pick it back up and, and save America. Would you say um, from what you've seen in from your past until now, would you say more than ever we're closer to Jesus' return by all the prof oh, prophecies? Oh, without, without a doubt. Without a doubt. We, we are very more. close. Yeah, very close to his return. But that in even in that, there's a danger where you go, and I've seen it already happen. I've seen great uh, men and women of God say, well, we're just, the rapture is about to happen any minute, you know, and, and they mean it in good terms. However, people will take that and go, well, I don't need to do anything. Jesus, just get me out of here, you know, and we can't take that. We've got to occupy until he comes, you know, like he says in Luke 19. So we've, we've got to be, we've got to be attentive. Let him find you working and doing the work of the ministry when he comes and calls for us to come home. But yes, who would have thought what we're seeing in America now, we would see four years ago. We, you and I wouldn't have ever thought we would mm -hmm. see this, no. but that's, that's the America we're in right now. It is. It's, it's, we got to um, rescue it. We do. And like you said, we have to do our part. Yeah, that's right. Whatever lane God gives us, then we need to do our part. Um, do you see a great awakening coming? Oh, well, I don't think a great awakening is coming. I think it's already here. It's here now. It's the revival's here. here. Revival's here. It just didn't look like the way we probably wanted it to look like. During the Azusa Street Revival 1906, everybody looks at that and goes, oh, that was great. And it was. But let's remember, 1906, corruption was at an all-time high in the Great Earthquake in 1906. There was a lot of devastation went on. Uh, the Welsh Revival, uh, 1904, you know, there was the same problem. There was corruption at the highest levels. The economy was bad. Crime was runaway, and yet God pours out. So the enemy wants to keep us focused on that instead of on what God's doing. So, yeah, God's doing some stuff. We just got to look for it and find it. You're not going to find it on ABC and CBS and NBC and Fox and everybody else. You're going to have to go to the right places, places like you and me, where we, they can see what's really happening in America. And we got to contend revival. I like that because it demands an action. We've got to, we've got to physically go do something to pursue God. Listen, God doesn't, he's not waiting up there going, well, I don't know, do they really want revival? I'm not sure yet. Look, we, we don't have to convince God of that. He's there. We've got, to, we've got to get to where he is, not wait for him to come to where we are. Now you've written a book. I love what you just said and I agree with that. You've written a book called Killing America, Turning the Tide on the Tsunami of Darkness. Right. And this is coming out March 5th. Yeah, it's coming out real soon. And, and that's a book that actually my wife Terry and I wrote together uh, in the mornings we would, uh, you know, over our morning coffee, she's usually already up by then and has uh, already uh, scoured the internet, had her Bible time and prayed and she's got stuff to tell me. <laughs> so I drink coffee because I'm not that type person that wakes up at 100 miles an hour. Uh, I'm, we would I, be similar to yeah, my husband and I. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm like, you know, she tells me and I, every morning I still have to say the same thing. Honey, I'm just waking up. You know, don't you talk to me, but I, I, I coffee. So um, that's the way. So this is what you're seeing in that book is what we talk about. And uh, uh, it's been, uh, some have already censored it and don't want it out there because of what we, which is shocking to me because they're, they're from the uh, Christian side. Um, but it's just, we, we are very frank and very blunt. This is not the time to dance around the issues. It is not. And uh, she's as blunt and direct as I am, in some cases more, especially when it comes to matters of uh, moms and protecting their ha homes and their kids. We, we can't. We can't allow that in our houses anymore. So well, I that's appreciate how it is. Um, because what I'm hearing you say is this is something married couples can use in their morning absolutely devotions together. Yeah, and during, before they pray together. Yeah, don't read it before bed because you'll just get mad and then you won't be able to sleep. So, <laughs> uh, but but there is hope, and, and on the cover of the book is uh, the Statue of Liberty. She's 
underwater except uh, the top of her hand with the torch. And that's really the state of the nation. She's going under, but there's still light. The light's still burning. We have time, but we're going to have to work to save America because they want to kill it. If we don't push back and stand up and say what we believe and put forth a voice, that liberal side is going to be a tsunami, which is right in your title, and That's it's right. going to come over us if we don't open our eyes and say, "Yeah, come on." I'm not just going to allow them to dictate to me. I have freedom of speech. I have That's, freedom of religion. You, right now, you still do. Yes. Well, thank God, yeah. we're NRB where we're at in Nashville, <clears throat> Tennessee. We have organizations like this where right. we're filming, and other organizations. You work with K Kenneth Copeland a lot. Yep, praise God. Sure. Um, and so we're going to keep being a voice, aren't we, brother? That's right. So tell me, what else are you, do you have going on? Revival Radio TV. Revival Radio TV is a program started back uh, 2015, and it's on weekly ac around uh, across America. And it's really focusing on revivals, what God's done throughout history. And uh, it started, we were just going to do a few radio programs, and it turned into television as well. The, the idea here was to go revisit some of these revivals that have been forgotten, some of the stories that you didn't hear. And I thought, you know, in my great infinite wisdom, how many is there, 10, 11, you know? And well, we're finding out there's hundreds of moves of God that have happened that have been documented, but have been lost to America, been lost oh, to the wow, church. And so we're going back, digging up some of these old stories, but talking about some of the new things like the Asbury revival that happened, re came again this past year. Uh, we did a special four-part series on the Reformation. What really happened? How did America happen? How did the Bible get to America? All these things that uh, we think we know until we're asked the question, and then we find out the real story. That's really what I was focusing on when Flashpoint came along, uh, but God had other plans. And it's important because if we don't take care of America, you can forget the church in 2025. I, I love history. So when yeah. you talk Martin Luther and <clears throat> yeah. uh, the Reformation and, and all that he, you know, he was like you. He was yeah. just trying to let the Catholic Church know with the 95 Thesis that he yeah. put in these the Word. These are problems. Back. Yeah, these are problems yeah. you need to address. Yeah, hello. He had no idea he was going to start a whole, but most people don't know that no. history. That's right, they don't. Or they have a warped view of what it is. Of what happened. Yeah, um, So I, th I love that you're, you're yeah. bringing up history because people need to understand and they need to understand our American history, um, switching gear a little bit as far as um, what the founding fathers were about. Right. Because they're trying to, you know, blur that of what our history really is. And, you know, I'm learning um, this morning at the Salem breakfast, they were talking about how um, the pastor went to pray at the Capitol and was given all these rules. He couldn't pray right. in Jesus' name. Wow. Wow. It's but crazy. he did it anyway. Good for him. So, you know, we, we're going to pray in Jesus' name, aren't Amen. we, brother? Amen, come on. And, yeah. and stand for what we know is the truth. And so I appreciate people like you that are... Oh, thank you. Um, you're not afraid and you're not no, backing not down backing from down. the critics. No, we're not. So now, Gene, people listening know a lot of who you are, I think. Sure. So I want you to take me back. And what, how did you find salvation? Like, how, did you, how did Jesus get a hold of your heart? Well, I was on drugs as a child. Um, <laughs> I was drugged to church on Sunday, there Sunday night, go. drug Wednesday. So, I, I mean, I got saved at, at Vacation Bible School as a young boy, 1968, which is a very interesting year in American uh, uh, Christianity. 1968 was a pivotal year. The beginning of that year, by the way, colleges had dress codes and, you know, jackets, ties. By the end of the year, we were burning down campuses and there was so I mean that's the hippie movement was going on, but I got saved there, and in uh, life so I, I mean I was a Christian from a young age, I, but you know teenage years come in and you kind of waver and do you know do your own thing and well I'm gonna find out what this is all about, so I'm not like anybody else I had to find out the hard way on a few things, and uh, that's really what happened. So I've always worked uh, in television. And, and went to school for TV. I actually wanted to go to uh, be an actor and uh, was in a lot of, uh, uh, was actually in a drama troupe that did some acting early on in my uh, career and loved it. And I really thought that's what I wanted to do. Uh, but I found out where the real power was in television was behind the scenes. 
so I had a career starting in the early, in the late 70s, uh, really when I started in TV and uh, did that behind the scenes for all those years. How long did you do that? Well, really, uh, I guess you could say I'm still doing that because I'm uh, in charge of the uh, Victory Channel as part of what I'm in charge of there that we, that we take, you know, broadcast around the world. So I'm still doing that, but uh, I would say until really uh, 2015, 2016, around that time is when I started stepping away more from that. And of course now Flashpoint takes up so much time that we're uh, saving America, rescuing America. Uh, being in an election year, this is a pivotal time. It is. If you could give advice for listeners for their daily walk with the Lord, what would you tell them? Number one, pray. And, and you know, this is, let me say, I'm glad you asked that actually, because uh, a lot of us have this image in our heads about when it says prayer, what does that really mean? And we, we have this image of like, you're stuck in your closet with your, you know, and it can be this, I'm not saying it can't be that, that you've got to separate yourself for two or three hours a day from, and pray. That's wonderful if you do, I'm not that guy. That's not who I am. And I don't think that's what God's necessarily looking for. God's looking for a relationship. And this is, this is where we miss it. We, we over-spiritualize, or, or not really spiritualize, we over-religify, if that's a word, uh, our relationship with God. And that's where we miss it, because we make it a religious activity. And God doesn't care about that. He, he just wants to talk to you. And so I, I, I think that's the number one thing. We've got to spend some time in prayer. Uh, John Kilpatrick was the pastor of uh, Brownsville Assembly, Pensacola yes. Revival. Mm -hmm. He said something to me last year that uh, we were talking about revival in the church. And he said, Gene, I, I was talking, asking him about what led up, you know, to the revival. And he said, we spent so much time in prayer, praying. And uh, he said, prayer, get this, prayer is the bank that a revol revival draws from. Where prayer makes a deposit in the bank that revival draws on. So if we're not praying, we're not getting our hearts right. There's one thing every revival had was there was always a move of prayer before it. Um, <clears throat> Father Nash is, if you do any history, you'll, you'll understand who he was. Uh, but Father Nash was the ahead guy for Charles Finney. And what he would do before Charles Finney would ever come to a city, he would go two weeks before or several days before at least and would rent a room, preferably in a basement with no windows and would pray for the meeting. And, and Finney understood the power of that. What a gift. And so, you know, they, in fact, it was so crucial to the meetings. Uh, when Father Nash passed away, Finney went off the road. He stopped traveling because he knew the power importance of prayer. Now, that does not mean we're trying to convince God to do anything. We're just trying to get, when you're praying, you're trying to line up your flesh and your, your own spirit. Where is God? God's not, not moved. We're the ones that move. So that's number one is prayer. The, the next thing we got, of course you gotta stay in the word and let God, but don't get under a conviction that you've gotta read a certain amount of scripture every day. Mm -hmm. You know, let God talk to you. You'll know when's enough, when's enough. Anything you can do is gonna be good. It used to be, people would say, well, you gotta get up early at 5 a.m. and uh, or 4.30 in the morning, and that's because you give God the first part of your day. I think that's great. I'm not a morning guy. That's not ever gonna work for me. I, I mean, I'll fall asleep. You know, uh, so when does it work? Spend time, spend time. We must do that first. And then take the Bible literally. What does it say to do? You will find in, the, in that book, it's a book of action. It's not a book of sitting and waiting on God to do something. It's a book of action. And that's what we, what we know. Faith without works is dead. Isn't, you know, we have to be busy doing what he's called us to do. So that's, that's what we have to do. We're gonna change America. Change your house first. Change you before you change your house. Fathers, we, we've, we've dropped the ball collectively in America. The fathers gotta stand up. And you say, why fathers? Well, because we've, we've been lulled to sleep by the media has labeled fatherhood. If you watch any uh, sitcom on television or anything, they always make the dad be the bumbling idiot who never really gets it and is out of touch and you know, mom's the one that really knows what's going on. Well, I understand that, and that, but it takes both. We have to have the leadership in the home, and we've got to have the motherhood in the home. We've got to have both. It's not one or the other. 
But fathers, we've dropped the ball on that and we've got to pick up our role. Be the priest in your own house first. Then you'll see your family change. Your family will change your neighborhood. Men were strong in the Bible. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't this weakling and submissive man. It was like they worked together, but the man led the family yeah. in their walk with God. That's right. Let's yeah. talk about the Azusa Revival a minute because that was an amazing move of God. Yeah, it was. Okay, let's, it, the Azusa Revival, <clears throat> William Seymour, son of a, he's a one-eyed son of a sharecropper, a black man who listened to Charles Parham in Topeka, Kansas, which if you can go to the New Year's Eve 1900 is when really the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit broke out in America. It's the, that's where we can trace it back to America to that day, okay? So he does not have the evidence of the Holy Spirit in his life. He gets invited to California to speak to a church, people that want to know more. They pay for his trip. Now this is the amazing part. They pay for his train ride all the way out there. He goes all the way out there, arrives at the church door, it's chained, they don't want him. He's like, well, kind of like, why did I come? William Seymour didn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He didn't understand, he didn't have that evidence yet in his life. Yet, what happens next is, he, the, he gets invited to the home on Bonnie Bray Street by some others that are there that uh, want to know more and that's when the Holy Spirit breaks out. He has to find a place to meet. Well they find a horse stable, a barn to meet in. Of course this is on Azusa Street and so he goes goes down there and rents this facility. Now here's the thing about William Seymour that a lot of people gloss over. There was an up upstairs room where he would go and he would put his head, uh, he would pray or they would, he would often be seen with an uh, orange crate over his head. He would put this box over his head, which must have been pretty comical looking to someone that didn't understand what he was doing. He did not want to be distracted from whatever God was trying to do or trying to tell him. So he would spend this time, and when he felt like it was time to move out, he would take the box off his head and, and flow. And this is when amazing miracles, but it wasn't just... Uh, it wasn't just William Seymour flowing and in, in praying for people. Listen, little children would flow in the miracle, miraculous. People would come out, the kids would play. They, their stories, uh, Tommy Walchill talks about their stories of the kids playing in the glory, the Shekinah glory, that there was a mist on the ground and the kids would play in it and, and you know, then people would come in and this one kid would pray for kids' teeth or pray for people's teeth and would put their fingers in the mouths of people that needed new teeth and teeth would grow on. You know, arms would grow out. Uh, these, aren't, these aren't curing a backache and a headache miracles. These are, you know, creative things are happening. So what's phenomenal there is how it affected, you know, it affected not just Southern California, it affected the world. Uh, several years ago, they say they can attribute 600 billion souls saved connected to their one way or another kind of came out that's of, amazing you know through the history that have been affected by Azusa Street uh, but people didn't there was no race this is the other thing there was no race that issues there people white black rich poor they would come and be a part and see God move so what do we take from Azusa Street uh, the, the the one of the keys that of the negatives I would say was that William Seymour received a pro prophetic word and said, do not ever label this. Don't ever put a sign up or do something that gives it a, its own name because if you do, it'll be over. Well, he did. He put a sign up called the Apostolic Mission and sure enough, once it was a thing, it was over. And, and it kind of waned and eventually, you know, it just kind of dribbled out until it wasn't really a thing anymore. So what do we learn from Azusa? <clears throat> Number one, we learned that God will use somebody even when they're not ready. You know, William Seymour got on a train to talk about something he hadn't experienced but knew it was of God. But you got to go back even, even further back to when he was listening to Charles Parham talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He was black, so he had to sit out on the porch and look through the door. He couldn't go in the house. So, you know, that sounds preposterous now. It was... He worked past what racial 
issue there was. Whatever the roadblock was, he worked past that. He didn't have it. He got on a train. Would you get on a train and go across America for something that you didn't really, you couldn't show, but yet you thought it was real? I mean, that right there is a miracle in itself. Then he gets there and there's another closed door and they've gated the church. We don't want what you've got because you don't have it. So it must be, it's probably demonic or something. You know, they, they were, uh, they shut him down. Yet he kept at it. So the stick to of seeking God, number one, but then stay in with it. Don't confer with any man. Stay with what you know to be the truth. And that's what William Seymour did. And look what God did. He poured out on all flesh that would come through there. The Armenians came through. That's a whole story uh, with Azusa Street. But the Welsh revival was still going at this time. They were talking back and forth across the ocean. Um, with Evan Roberts was talking with William Seymour. They were sending cables back and forth. So God was pouring out. Out of that came John G. Lake who went down to Africa. I mean, a lot came out of there uh, to uh, around the world that affected, affected the world for God. But no man is responsible. No man can take credit. But how often do we, do we not look past the roadblocks to see God move? So Don't, that's what would you Would you me. say a roadblock might be a sign that it is God? <laughs> it could be. It Sometimes could be. I think it is because something's trying to prevent that from happening. If the happening. church, I, I, I can say this because this is what I recently have experienced. If the church is coming against you, it's probably a sign of God. <laughs> well, I, I could talk about revivals with you and, and listen about God's moves all yeah. day long because it's amazing it is what amazing. God has done on the earth. And I love the Shekinah glory of God. Yeah. Um, we need more of that in yes, our life. Yes, we do. And I believe us. we're going to see it again. I do too, yeah. Gene. Um, well, I appreciate Thank you. all that you're doing for the kingdom. And Thank you, so you much. didn't let any roadblocks or critics keep you down. You keep nope. on going for Jesus. And, Amen. And I appreciate you, brother. So thank, thank you, you for so much. Um, coming on the program and thank talking you. about My Flashpoint. And, and listeners, we want to get you. Um, information about the book. How can they get your book coming out? KillingAmericaBook.com. KillingAmericaBook.com. Thank you, brother. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you. Hi, partners. I have some special gifts for you today with a $50 donation. This will help us take the gospel around the world. I have a special mug, Propel Her Forward, that you can drink out of. I have a special journal for you full of scripture and places for you to take notes when I'm teaching. And I have a lotion that comes from the Jordan River from Israel. So when you get these three items, you're not only giving us a blessing to take the gospel around the world, but you get a part of Israel, you get a part of scripture, and you have a scripture mug. On the mug, it says, the Lord is my high ridge, my stronghold, my deliverer. My God is my summit from Psalm 18.2. Go to the phone, call us, or go on the website. Go to drmarla.org and get your items today. Thank you so much for helping us take God's word around the world.